Terrell Thomas, The Is Urban Times, and I'm sitting down with a gentleman today who's doing this thing in the music scene. I've heard his music. I see his sound. I see the drive in which he has, and I know that big, big, big things are in his future. Uh, Risney from Missouri, so we're going to talk about that and kind of get some some details about his hood, his upbringing, and just where his sound and everything originates from. Franco, how you doing today, sir? Man, I'm good, man. I appreciate you having me, bro. Oh, uh, man, long overdue. So we ain't, we ain't even got yes, to say long overdue. <laughs> As I said to you, I'm going to say it even publicly. Thank you for your patience and working with me. I was supposed to get down with this brother a while ago. Uh, <laughs> and, and he's definitely been patient and working with me, so I appreciate you there. But I, I, I want to give our audience a better chance to learn who you are as a man, learn who you are yes, as an sir. artist. And, and I, as I just mentioned, your upbringing so they can understand where your sound comes from. So you're uh, not from St. Louis. I know you run with a lot of St. Louis cats and such, but you're actually from a right. town about 40, 45 minutes outside of St. Louis. Uh, talk to right. me about your upbringing and give your city some love. Man, so first of all, first and foremost, I'm from a small country town in St. Clair, Missouri, man. It's population, when I was growing up, probably around like, I say 3,900 people. It's since grew a little bit more now. It's probably about around the 5,000 range, but real small, man. It was like a few black families out there, predominantly white. So my sound is actually very authentic. It's all me. You know, I had some uh, influences by like my brother, like my older brother. He was in a little rap game for a little while. They didn't really do too, too much, but like they were my influences because I looked up to them a lot. So, you know, really, that, that's where it came from, man. Now, um, I grew up in St. Louis as well. My father's from here. So on weekends, you know, I was down here with my cousins. That's where I learned how to, you know, drive people and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, I learned the city ways. So I always say I'm a country boy with city ways. Okay. I dig that very well. I dig that very well. Coming up, who are some artists in which you were listening to? Who influenced you? Because I, I, I know a lot of people who may not – be very familiar with St. Louis, they're going to automatically search, think certain things. They might think of Nelly, the St. Lunatics. But this city has yeah. so many more artists, so many diverse sounds. And with it being the Midwest, it's almost like a conglomerate of so many different styles and such. So who did you grow up right. listening to? Man, believe it or not, like, not a lot of rappers for real. I grew up listening to oldies. So my old bird, man, my mother, which I love to, love to death, man, she um she listened to, like, a lot of Earth, Wind and, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, Osley Brothers, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I really came up on that. And then, you know, you got my big brother. He was more like the gangster of the family. So he turned me on to like the masterpiece and, the, you know, then I start coming up like the Jeezy's, the Gotti's. Like this is early, you know, in the early in that era or whatever. I'm listening to all that in high school. Like when Trapper Doc came out, I was just a freshman in high school. So I'm going to school with the Kane Band, the Snowman shirts on. Teachers figured out what it meant. They telling us to take them off. So I grew up listening to that kind of stuff, man. Do you feel like the older, the old school music and like hearing those classic has like helped you with your sound now? Because you do have, you know, I know you spitting some dope shit. When I hear some of the production in which you've chosen, it definitely does. You know, as as you say that, I I, I hear where where that comes from. So yeah. that that all go go into like your music selection and such. Yeah, for sure, man. Because that's the life I was living. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people get it twisted. If you don't know where 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 the country is, where Saint Clair is, and when you, when I tell you where it is, you're thinking, oh, okay farmland, all that shit. But really, it's a whole nother, a nighttime, you know, a nightlife there too to where motherfuckers getting that bag. You know, like my big brother and them, like, dog, like they had a fed case, like they was getting that bag, like big bags. They all, you know, so we come from an area getting that money. So when I'm hearing Trap or Die or I'm hearing, uh, you know, the Gotti mixtapes and shit like that, that shit inspired me to get, you know, run my sack up. And I did that, you know what I'm saying? So I can truthfully say, I got my shit out the mud. You know what I'm saying? I really ran it up. So you recently were also were in LA doing big things. I know you've been on the road a whole lot this spring and this yeah. summer, uh, performing and getting your craft and your sound out there. Talk to me about your time in LA and what had you out there. Man, LA was cool, man. So actually, my big brother Tef Poe, which you familiar with him, he's the reason why I was in LA doing the payday event, right? Uh for uh what was that for? That was for Grammy weekend, I believe it was. Grammy or, or something BT. like that. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. BET, BET week. I'm sorry, BET week. So, yeah, we were out there for that. So, uh, Tep got the call from the promoter, and then he's like, hey, we got an opportunity. You ready to roll? I said, shit, I can't book my flight quick enough. So, you know, <laughs> we booked the flights. We slid. You know what I'm saying? We did our thing. But a funny story behind that, man. So, I'm always cool all the way up until we land. As soon as I land, I lose my fucking voice, man. So, I'm running around trying to get tea and honey. 
So I called my doctor. And my doctor's like, man, let me see if I can send this cortisone shot out there. Well, they wouldn't allow me to get it over the counter and all the clinics were busy. It was so last minute. So they did let me get like a cortisone pill. So I grabbed a couple of those. And then by like, I say a couple of hours, I was about a good 60, 70%. Soon as I hit the stage and got to like the third song, my shit was back shot again. So I just kind of <laughs> like did the best I could and then, you know, got off the stage and then we gonna call LA a rap until next time. So can you but, elaborate yeah, for me just just a little bit? Elaborate on my, your relationship with Tef Poe. Real dope cat, does a lot with man, politics. That's big bro, man. So I met Tef through uh our current manager, Jay Stretch. Them two have been working together for years, you know what I'm saying? And uh we had worked together at this little job we was doing, me and Stretch did. And we, you know, was in the same training class. We got to talk of music. He's like, oh, I work with this artist, you know, Tell Paul. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've heard that name before. And I've always wanted to meet Tell, but just never could. You know, if you ain't in the circle of people, you can't just go up trying to, you know. So <laughs> I'm sitting there patiently waiting when Stretch finally put the opportunity together. I'm thinking, man, this nigga's going to be an asshole, all this. When I say the most humbling cat I've ever met, dog, like I'm talking about, He's the true definition of like a real one. Like he'll give you game. Like, you know, they always say the games be sold not to be told, man. Tep will give you the game play by play and then still beat you at that shit. Like he's the <laughs> sensei for real. Like <laughs> oh, that, that's that's a dope brother. Smart brother. Yeah, man. man. Cool as he want to be for no reason, man. Just cool, humble ass cat, man. Love him to death. Now you're working on some new music as we, you know, as we're chatting right now. You might even just took a, a break from being in, in, in the studio and whatnot. Yeah, I'm actually in the studio right yeah, now. <laughs> you, 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 you're working on some new music and whatnot, so I'm looking forward to hearing what you have. But you have a single that will be coming soon, Louis Dance. Louis that's, Dance, yes, that's sir. Got some, some features on that as well. Talk to me about that. Man, Louis Dance. So uh, the producer, right, uh, a couple producers been sending me beats, you know, throughout my, uh, my email. So I'm stumbling across some, well, I come across the beat first. So this is how the song came together. I heard the beat, a uh, cat named Hellstein from uh, Russia, I believe. He produced it. Yeah, he produced it, sent it over to me. I heard it. I put a verse, I put my verse down in like 15 minutes. You know, that's for recording everything. It was that hot. And like, when I find a beat like that, dog, it's a rap. So I put my beat down. Well, then uh, I was like, man, I need a hook. You know what I'm saying? Do I want to write a hook? I'm like, no, nah, let me holler at my boy Fresco Kane. You know, that's 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 somebody who wrote for Mariah Carey, he was with uh So So Def, like all of them. So I'm like, let me let me reach out to Fresco, see what we can make happen. He said, Yeah, shoot the record over. So I shot it over to him. And like I say, a couple of days later, he shot it back. I said, Oh yeah, I fuck with this. Well, in the meantime, me and my uh me and my cousin, we shout out to Oklahoma to uh, meet up with my uh, producer, or my, my good homeboy, C.L. McCoy. Shout out to C.L., by the way. Um, he works with anybody you can think of in the industry. So I met him. You know, he came to St. Louis for an event, and, and the rest is history from there. So we, we go out there. We fly out there at his birthday party. He told me I need to be there with some people that I want to meet. So we're no – I said we probably 10 minutes out the car. We just checked in the room. He's like, hey, get to the studio. I got somebody I want to try to meet. And Gorilla Zoe was there. So he was like, hey, this is Zoe, man, blase, blase. And, you know, we chopped it up and uh, I played him the record and shit, the rest was history. I sent it to Zoe. A couple of days later, he shot it back. And then Fresco heard that. He's like, hey, I'm going to put a verse on there. I'm like, all right, I'm thinking the record's done at this point. <laughs> so I, I flew it back over to Fresco. Fresco put a verse on and shot it back. And then, man, damn, there go to Louis dancing. So. It's a dope record, man. Fun record. Um, we're waiting on the actual release date from a distribution company that we're going through. Okay. So um, right now it's not out, but it, wait, wait till it drops, though. <laughs> if you had an opportunity, and I'm, I'm going to say two artists, two artists overall, any genre, past, present, and future. I know you said you got a lot of love for, like, the oldies in which you grew up yeah. listening to with your mom. Who would be two artists in which you would love to have features from? From the oldies? I got to work with my man, Ronald Isley. And the reason why we was just at his crib not that long ago doing a commercial. So I'm going to be in that commercial as well, too. That's so, some uh, bullshit. That's big. Man, that's big man, shit. Man, like, that's that's crazy. And uh, again, another opportunity from Tiff. You know what I'm saying? So I got I to gotta shout him out because, you know, that's that's my guy. He makes sure I'm in the right place at the right time. But, uh, no, I say Ronald Isley, man, if I had to take it back, I'm going to take it back to my uh my days outside, man, when I was, when I was a little wilder. I say... It's got to be a Jeezy or a Gotti, man. Like, them, them are my top two cats I listen to. Okay, okay. No, no, not mad there at all. Not mad there at all. Yeah, yeah. We're moving into 
the third quarter really much uh, of the year fall right around the corner and such. Yeah. As we continue to move through 2023, what, what like, what's on your plate? Where, where do you see yourself with music? Any projects in store? Yeah, we actually got a project about to drop, man, called My Time. I'm waiting on everything is already pressed up. Everything's done on the business end. We're just waiting on the uh, the final finesses on everything. And then we're ready to fly, man. So My Time is dropping the EP, nine records on there. I got some crazy features on there, man. I got, it's a lot of energy on there. And I'll take you through a journey, man. We're going to start it off real, real nice and mellow. Then we're going to get hot. Then we're going to go outside. We're going to bring it back in for the ladies. So okay. Okay. you get a mixture of everything in nine tracks, bro. I take you from ground zero all the way up to level 100 real fast. This is my first time being introduced to Franco. I want to know more about him and whatnot. What is a great song in which I should listen to? Say that one more time. I say, say that one more time. If this is my first time being introduced to you, and after mm -hmm. this interview, I'm like, hey, I want to check out some more of this guy's music. Really get to learn about his sound. What is a great record okay. you suggest them checking out or vid or visual? I say uh, a record called "Goodbye" by myself and Chris Matthews. That's a longtime homeboy of mine, man. It's got a uh, 1.3 million views on Facebook. We did, which I actually, if I can flip it, I got a plaque for it <laughs> right here in the studio. That's all. Right. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then we did. Uh, I forget how many Spotify, but on. YouTube is just currently like 126 or 127,000 views. Okay. So if I, I say that one, man, it's a fun, energetic record. Um, It's outside. It's like a pool party type deal, man. Mansion house that we was in. We pulled the whips out. It was, it's a dope time, man. It was fun. Man, how can, how can people stay in tune with you via social media? How can they check out, stream your music? How, how can they lock in and, and, and really, and really find out more about you? On uh, all platforms, man. I got Instagram, I am Franco. Facebook, I am Franco. Um, what is that? Uh, Twitter, same thing. I am Franco on everything, man. You can also check out the YouTube and uh, go to that's I am Franco as well. And then you tune in like that. Man, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to just actually sit down in, in person, whether it is out there in the Midwest somewhere, when you come down here to Atlanta. Um, For again, sure. Hey, again, I'm in dog. Atlanta a lot too, man. I, uh, I deal with Patchwork Studios a lot uh, oh, when shit, I'm in dog. Atlanta. When you come again, yeah. hit me. I'll, I'll pull up on you and we do something. You know what I'm got saying? you. Got and, you. And, I'm and I do want to say again, like, man to man, thank you for working. My well, my schedule has been crazy as shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, I can you know only imagine. Thank you, man. Thank, I, I definitely sure. appreciate that. Looking forward to us doing some things in the future. Make sure y'all stream this gentleman's music right now. Y'all can actually check out Goodbye on These Urban Times. So y'all can do that immediately following this interview as well. Peace and blessings, black man. Be safe out here. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me.